And finally, it gives me great pleasure to announce the very final award that we give tonight. And as I said, these individual awards are not so much awards as they are a token of responsibility to the rest of us. But the highest token of responsibility is those who have served in the industry and defined it through their lifetime. There are two things I want to say about this award. The first is the name of the award. It's called the William Bill Seatman Lifetime Achievement Award. William Seatman was the chairman of the FDIC in his time and also the inaugural chairman of the debt resolution corporation that was set up in the US that eventually became the model for good bank, bad bank in the rest of the world. In the last years of his life, William Seidman was a member of the advisory council of the Asian Bankers Summit. He would come to the Asian Bankers Summit every other year and use that time to go visit um, some of the different places in Asia. In that time, we got to know him very well. I spent one Thanksgiving with him in Nantucket in the US and had many conversations with him that gave me a glimpse of how the industry had changed. William Seidman once told me, he said, you know, Basel, three, Basel one was decided in one day sitting. And Basel two at that time when he was telling this to me was still an ongoing discussion. Let's not even start with Basel three. And through very simple concepts, he contributed to the development of the Main Street banks in the US to be very simple and run on simple matrix that became uh, widely, ex uh, widely used in understanding what a good bank is made of. Non-performing loans, cost to income ratios, profitability, return on equity, and so on. And we today honor the Lifetime Achievement winners with the name of the William Seidman Lifetime Achievement Award to recognize the difference that this man made, not just in his country, but in our part of the world through his involvement with us. Ladies and gentlemen, the gentleman that we would like to recognize tonight for his Lifetime Achievement Award is not able to be with us. And he's, he's a gentleman that we've been wanting to give this award for many years since that uh, we recognize uh, his amazing achievement. There are, and sometimes it's actually very difficult to get many CEOs in the room all at once. And when you get a few together, you're already doing well. But we make an exception for Lifetime Achievement Awards in that this is the one award that we do not make a demand that they come to receive the award in person because in the case of this winner, He's 85 years old, and his, <clears throat> his bank, uh, his doctors have told him that he can't even travel uh, to the next town, let alone across the sea, to, to, to receive this award. So the Council of Advisors have made exception, uh, and the chairman of the Council of Advisors and I will be visiting him in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, to give him this award. Two things that needs to be said about this gentleman. In the Asian banker, when we teach our researchers to understand how to assess the banking industry, we ask them to look at certain matrix. Non-performing loans, less than 2% is the going rate today. Return on equity, there used to be a time when the best banks would declare return of equity of about 20% and above. Today, you're doing well if you did 15, and you're doing okay if you do 12 and above. Non and cross cost to income ratio, I think so many of us strive to keep it below 50% if, if you're a regional bank. You're doing very, very well if you do 30%. And consistently, over the years, there's been only two institutions globally that has been able to keep their cost-to-income ratios at 30% and declare good dividends to their shareholders. And one of them is this bank that this gentleman has led. The second thing that needs to be said about this gentleman is the um, enormous change that he's made in the country in which he serves. He was at one time a founding staff employee of the National Bank, May Bank in Malaysia, but then he left 
as an entrepreneur to set up his own bank. And in setting up his own bank, he also set up an institution that today has become the benchmark institution that all other banks in that country set out to compete and do better and somehow cannot figure out why they cannot beat this institution in all of its numbers. There's nothing amazing about this institution. If you visited it, you would find staff who are extremely loyal, who get two to three years worth of bonus because of their loyalty and because of the numbers that they're able to declare. This gentleman leads an institution that demonstrates that banking does not need to be made of great people, just ordinary people doing great things together. And as long as they stay together, the greatness comes in the course of time. I'm not reading from the script because I know this man very well, and it gives me great pleasure to announce that the Lifetime Achievement Award for 2015 goes to Chairman of Public Bank Group Malaysia, Tan Sri Te Hong Piao. And as the final conclusion for this evening, I will leave it for Tan Sri Te to have the last word for us. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening. Today is indeed a special day. I feel honored to receive this prestigious award, especially when banking is my passion. There is a saying that if we love our job, we will not have to work a day in our life. Indeed, I feel like I'm being awarded for the joy that I have all these years. Being the founder of Public Bank and seeing it grow all these years gives me great satisfaction. Looking back, what counted most was to promote excellence and build a strong corporate culture. A culture of discipline and integrity, thereby earning customers' trust. Like all dreams, mine is only possible with the support of my public bank family and members of my board. I would like also to dedicate this award to our customers, shareholders and business associates. My thanks also goes to the Malaysian government for creating a business-friendly climate. Ladies and gentlemen, the Asian banker is highly regarded and trusted around the world. This recognition will certainly motivate me and the bank to perform even better. Once again, I would like to express my appreciation to the Asian banker. I am sure that your task was not easy. More so when the business community has a fair share of great leaders. Thank you.